Hello and welcome. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 and this is the Phoenix Airbus A320. And in today's episode I would like to show you a little quirk about the managed descent on the Airbus. We'll discuss how it happens, why it happens and what you can do if you encounter it. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we are flying today into Palma de Mallorca in Spain and we are coming from a routing that takes us further south which means we'll be flying to the airport via a star called Rixot. So there's two different Rixot arrivals, it doesn't matter which one you choose. Essentially you come in here via Rixot, you fly inbound to Cap de Pera and from there you join the ILS onto runway 24 left. This is what happens in the real world all the time. Now there's one thing that's very important. You can see here at the waypoint Rixot it says you need to be at flight level 230 or below. The reason is that departing traffic will depart from runway 24 right and a lot of them will do this 180 degree turn here, fly past the island and then turn northbound to fly to places like Germany, Switzerland, Austria or the United Kingdom. And so what happens is you have inbound and outbound traffic crossing here. So what they want you to do is to be below 230 and the departing traffic will have to be above that. So they cross above and you cross below. Now the easiest way to do this of course is with managed descent. ATC will at some point give you a descent clearance and they will say descent flight level 230 to be level at Rixot. The easiest to do is to just press manage descent and the aircraft will take care of that and ensure that you are at flight level 230 here. After Cap de Pera there are further altitude and speed restrictions so it actually makes sense to fly the whole thing with managed descent so the aircraft will take care of all the speed and altitude restrictions for you and you just let the autopilot do its thing and uh, yeah you basically can concentrate on other things. So far so good. Now let's see what happens when we do this in the aircraft. Okay, so we are just about to approach the top of descent. ATC has told us descent and maintain 230 to be level at Rixot. We can see that restriction here on the ND. You see we are just ahead of the top of descent. The aircraft will now calculate what it needs to do to be level off at flight level 230. So everything is done for you. Okay, and now we are just leveling off here at Rixot, flight level 230. The aircraft has done an amazing job. And now comes the interesting bit. So if you look down here, we are still a hundred miles away from the airport. And if you remember the trick I've showed you, looking up here, we actually need 80 miles to get down. So we are actually way too low. But looking at the yo-yo and the PFD, you can see it's telling us that we are too high. In fact, it's going down further and further and you can see here it says we are 500 feet too high and counting. So how is this possible? How does the aircraft think we are too high when quite clearly we are way too low to fly our profile? Well, let me explain this to you with a little graph. So this is the standard profile of any descent. We will try to stay at the cruising level for as long as possible before we put the engines into idle and essentially glide the plane down towards the airport. The engines should remain in idle until we're on the ILS when they spool up again for the final approach. So this is the most efficient way to approach an airport. It's also how the autopilot is programmed to fly the approach. Now in our scenario, we have this point and this point is clearly below the most efficient approach path, but we need to of course 
go to that point because for safety reasons. So the autopilot will of course follow the flight level restrictions and descend down to this particular point. After passing this point, of course the most efficient way to fly the aircraft would be to stay at this altitude until we rejoin the most efficient descent path, like I've shown here. But this is not what the Airbus Autopilot is calculating. It will take your current altitude and simply draw a straight line to the runway for a continuous descent. Now at first glance this looks very nice and efficient, but it isn't because the engines will never go into idle and you spend a lot more time at lower altitudes where the aircraft is burning more fuel. So this is actually a less efficient way of flying the approach. Nevertheless, it is what the Airbus computer usually calculates in a scenario like this and hence the yo-yo will show you that you are too high even though you're clearly below profile. So what can we do about this? The solution is actually very simple. You come down to the MCDU, you click on direct and you choose the next waypoint which is Cup de Para. You simply take Cup de Para and go to direct. And now what happens is the aircraft will recalculate the descent path and as you can see the yo-yo is now showing that we are too low. In fact if we look here we are 5700 feet too low. But that's very different from what it has just shown us previously where it told us that we are too high. So that's how you find your way around it. Actually very simple but if you've never encountered it and if you don't know about it it may really well, screw with your approach. So one of the little quirks of the Airbus and uh, something I thought would be quite interesting to discuss. So what's the moral of the story? The moral is that automation is great, but please always cross-check what the aircraft is doing. Put in the threshold into the MCDU, so you have a distance, and then calculate how high you should be according to that distance. Don't just blindly trust what the aircraft is doing. It may actually fly an approach path that is way too low and yeah, you could end up busting an airspace or even worse. So that's essentially the moral of the story and why I thought it'd be interesting to talk about this topic. And as we are coming into land here in beautiful Palma de Mallorca on yet another nice sunny day I will bring this video to an end. I hope you found it useful and interesting and I would really look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then all the best. Bye bye.